Hello crochet crafters. So we're going to finish up our chicken that we were making and we're going to make the eyes and the bow tie, etc. So if you are just joining us, please go to my video prior to this one and check out how to make an amigurumi chicken pot holder, the body style. For this project, you will not need a crochet hook. You will need a crochet hook to do the top, I'm sorry but you will need more importantly, a plastic needle or a metal one. I am not crazy about metal ones because I've torn up my hands too many times and they're still pretty torn up, but in any event, I'm using a plastic one, some scissors, and my crochet hook is the same size that I used for the project. I'm not changing crochet hooks. So I used an E4 3.5 millimeter and I'm going to use a red now. So what we're going to do is we're going to count because we need to create the hook that the pot holder goes on in the top of the chicken's head. So go ahead and get your yarn onto your crochet hook. And I'm a big fan of working my tails back in on this folks. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at where the top of my chicken's head is. And then from the top of my chicken's head, I'm counting one, two, three stitches over, and I'm inserting my crochet hook. I'm casting on my crochet hook with a slip stitch. So now I've got this tail. I'm gonna work my tail back in right now. If you can't do it, you can use your slip stitch, your sewing needle to get it on. But I'm going to do a double crochet where I cast on, so I'm gonna wrap it around and I'm doing the tail with it. Again, it's not mandatory because it is does take a little bit of finesse with this crochet hook. And then I'm gonna do another double crochet into that same spot. So I'm making the nice little fluffy red head. And then in the next spot, I'm gonna do a double crochet. And I'm gonna do another double crochet into that spot as well. And then in the third spot, remember we counted three over. I'm gonna do another double crochet. And then when you're at the top of your chicken head, you want to go ahead and slip stitch, no double crochet. You're going to slip stitch through that. No chains, nothing, just a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain six. Two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to be your hook for your pot holder. So you have three more on the other side you have to do. But before we do that, important, you're gonna go back through that middle where you just left off, cast off, and you're going to just slip stitch. It's a little tricky, but you're gonna go ahead and pull it through. And if you have to tighten it up afterwards, you can. So I make it a little loose because it is a little tricky to do a slip stitch. And then you've got that pot holder hook that you can put anywhere, hang anywhere in your kitchen. And then you're gonna do a double crochet one double crochet and then another double crochet into that one. And then in the next one, you're gonna do a double, you're gonna do this three times and it's gonna be two double crochets in both one and in each stitch. So you should have a total of six double crochets across your rooster's head. So when you get to the end of that, you're gonna go ahead and cut. I don't know what I did. Here's my little craft scissors. Make sure you have a pair of scissors that works for yarn. If you don't, you shouldn't be using the same scissors that you use for cutting paper or using in the kitchen because you really need to have a separate craft scissor that works on fabric. So you have the top. Now, I'm not gonna work this in right now in the video, but you're going to basically cast your 
yarn onto your needle and if you couldn't work the other one back in, which I worked the other one back in, the tail, except for this little piece. So really all I have to do is go here like this and just cut that little piece off. But don't just cut it off if you didn't work your tail in because you need to work it in. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. You don't just work it in like this because when someone goes and washes this pot holder, it's going to come up. Rule of thumb for working a tail back in is you work up, down, sideways, and across. So if you work down and back up and sideways and across, you will have a nice tight stitch where someone can wash this and hang out or just lay flat to dry. Don't want to put it in the dryer. Now we're going to make the, since we're on the red, we're going to go ahead and make the bow tie. Now the bow tie requires a treble slash triple stitch and you want to go ahead and cast your yarn onto your crochet hook again. And this is a little tricky. So I'm not using a magic ring. I'm using the chain two method, which is a little tricky with this treble stitch. So you can use a magic ring if it's easier for you. But I'm leaving this fr first loop loose. And then I'm chaining. And so I've chained two. That's the chain two method, right? So after you've chained two, hopefully your first loop is loose because that's what we're going to be working into is this first loop right here. So you're going to chain one, two, and three. So it looks like you have a total of five, but really, it's, trust me, it's you're working into this. This is going to be like your magic loop. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do a treble crochet. And to do that, you wrap it around once like you're doing a double and you wrap it around twice so you've got two wraps on there and you're going to hold this and you're going to work it back through this front stitch you're going to pull it through so you have four on your hook now you're going to wrap it around and you're going to pull it through the first two that's one. You're going to wrap it around again and pull it through the second two. And you're going to wrap it around and pull it through the thir third two to make a treble, triple stitch. So as you can see, this is what it should kind of look like after you've done that. I'm going to wrap it around. And we're going to do it again. So you've wrapped that around two times. And again, we're going into the same, we're gonna work into that same first stitch. And I hold the tail to kind of give me an anchor. And I pull it through and I'm holding the tail. I've got four. Wrap it around again. One. Two. Three. This is giving it the curly cues on the bow tie. So right now you have your chain where you started and you have two of those stitches and we're going to do it again. Wrap it around, wrap it around. Pulling it through the first one, grabbing your yarn. You have four. Wrap it around, pull it through the first two. Wrap it around, pull it through the second two. And you really have to manipulate the yarn with your other hand. Wrap it around and pull it through the third two. So, you have three of those. And you're gonna go ahead and chain one, two, three, and four. 
when you've done that, you're going to kind of curl it. And you're going to go through the first and you're going to slip stitch it. Pull it through and pull it through that chain. Now, that's one side of your bow tie. So if, as you can see, the reason we did that chain is we have a chain on the top and we have a chain on the bottom and I like it to look consecutive. So you could literally do another one of those and pull it that way, but by chaining it that way, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and chain four again. But what I'm doing is I'm picking up the end of my um, tail. You can or cannot, whatever you want to do, you can work it back through with a plastic needle. Chain four, and I'm working my tail in so it's a little bit tight. Three, four. So I worked my tail in pretty good. I have a little piece right there, but I can cut that. And when you get to the fourth one, you're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to do three of these trebles on the other side to match. So we're going to wrap and wrap. Pull it through the middle there. Now your middle is really starting to be pronounced. And you're going to wrap it through the first two. I mean, pull it through the first two. Pull it through the second two. Pull it through the third two. The verbiage on how to do these things is very specific, and I'm sometimes not specific. But wrap it around twice. Pull it through. Wrap it around. Pull it through. Wrap it around. Pull it through. Wrap it around. Pull it through. Now we need one more of those. Hopefully you have these stitches a little down now. And when you have three of those, we have to go ahead and make a chain so that it looks like the top. I've, I've worked, this is how the back looks, I've worked my tail in, so I'm gonna go ahead and chain four, two, three, four, and I'm gonna bring it right back in the front and slip stitch. And as I do that, I'm going to leave a long piece this time so that I can work that bow tie into my chicken. Now I'm going to show you how to crochet, I mean, how to basically sew this on. If you know how to sew traditional sewing, you will not have a problem. If you have never sewed in your life, I have to show you a couple of tips and tricks because if you want to sell this chicken or give it as a gift, you can't just stick your needle through and pull it back through because if you look at the back, the back should look as good as the front. And so there's a trick for, for working this bow tie in. And the way that you do that is, you see the loops right here on your work? You figure out, and if you need to pin this off, you can pin it off too, where you, where you kind of want your elements to go. So if you want to do that before you get going, you can pin them off. But I want my bow tie to kind of go here. I'm going to work only in the top loops and pulling it through. Okay? And then I'm going to pull it through again only working in the top loops. Now, if you haven't done this before, it can be a little tricky because you want it to be tight, but see the back, you can see a little bit of thread through, but it's not threading it through. Now, if you want your bow tie, I like mine to be a little floppy. If you want it to be tight to the chicken, you have to do this a few times and you have to thread it through. It doesn't really matter where you thread it through as long as it's 
in the top loops. So I'm going to go through. Oops. Bringing it back through. My needle came loose. So, so here's what you want to do now. If you just cut this off and you put this in the wash, this is not going to work. So we talk it about working it up, down, and sideways. So you're going to put thread it through up. And then you're going to thread it through down in a little different place. And then you're going to thread it sideways right to left. And when you do that with your yarn, trying to keep the integrity of your stitches too, because you have to be careful where you work that yarn through so that it looks still like the stitches that you wanted to start with. So I've done that now, up, down, sideways. And when that goes through the wash, that will not come loose. See the back and the front. And let me go ahead and show you real quick how to get this in nice and even too, if you're interested. If you're not, that's okay too. So I go back through the bottom right here and I kind of slide it all the way through as far as I can get it into down a couple of loops and then I bring it down. So you can see it looks like this other side. Then I take it through the next loop and I bring it, slide it back through. So I'm going side to side first, okay? So then I'm gonna go up one Again, working it where it's not going to show into my crochet stitches because I don't want to ruin the look of my crochet stitches. And then in the next loop, I'm going to bring it down. So I've gone side to side and then up and down. And then you never want to knot anything on a pot holder. It looks awful. Okay, let's work on the beak. I've got some yellow. And if you don't have all these colors, you can be creative and use whichever colors you want. But the beak is really super, super easy. You just get your yarn onto your crochet hook, the same size, and you chain three. One, two, three. That's it. And then working into those first two stitches, you just do a single crochet and a single crochet. Now, what I typically do is I slip stitch into that one I just did a single crochet into, and I grab both my yarn and my tail, and I pull it through that slip stitch. I think I was off the camera for that one. And it's really, really super easy because as you've pulled it through right there, you, you've literally just created a little beak. Now I tell you don't tie, but because I'm going to sew this on, when I tie, if I tie this and I put it in the back, you're not going to see it because it'll be like this. So for the beak purposes, I do, I do tie a couple of knots and then I hide it in the back of the little beak. Like so. I cut this off. And I'm going to tell you a little secret because we're not going to sew this on. I use yellow thread, 
not yarn, and I go ahead and I work very gingerly through these top, top knots so that, again, you don't see it on the back. So you can use whatever thread you want, but this is how I do my beak. Now you can do the same thing with the eyes. I use black thread typically, and it can be very challenging to use black thread because you have to use a lot of black thread. But if you wanna use black yarn, 100% cotton, I will show you how to make some eyes. So what you wanna do is you wanna get some pins and put them in there so that you know where you want your eyes to go. I've done this a lot, so I kind of already know, but if you wanna pin it first, you can. So sliding it through the top loop, you pull your yarn and you leave the tail. And make sure you haven't pulled the back loop. Whoop. Make sure you haven't pulled the back loop, which I haven't. And then you want to go back through again this way. Now, if you do regular sewing, you know what I mean when I talk about knotting off. But if you don't do regular sewing, what you're going to do is when you pull your yarn through, you have a loop here. You're going to pull it through and you're going to knot it as you would do in regular sewing. So the way you do that is you put your needle through that loop like that so that when your loop goes through the eye, it is knotted. That's knotted. And then right under it, we're going to pull it through again. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to knot it. It won't hold, folks, if you don't do the knots because the eyes are a little bit tricky. So if you've knotted it. I'm gonna pull it through one more time in a different, kind of in a different direction because I wanna make the eye a little different. And I'm gonna pull it through and knot, knot it. It has to be knotted. The eyes will not hold. Then you pull it tight. And hopefully, because you've done three knots and made a knotty eye. Ha ha, knotty eye. That eye is going to hold. And see? So the back of your work is still looking lovely. And we'll go ahead and make the other eye. If you're tired of me and you don't want to hang in there anymore, you can just go ahead and venture out and make your pot holder. So again, I'm going to leave some of this. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to do it. And then as I pull through, I'm going to not go through that and knot it. One. And then I'm going to go pull through again and knot it. Two. And I'm going to pull through third time and knot it. Now I could make eyelashes too. So a great way to make eyelashes, I'll just show you now. I'm not going to make it on this one, but you just pull these threads apart like this. And then you would just, you know, cut them like this. And then you would just kind of let those ravel. <laughs> you can make eyelashes. <laughs> so cute. But for this one, I decided she doesn't have eyelashes. And we knotted three times. So hopefully that'll make it through the wash. And just kind of close that a little bit. So we've got the eyes. And while we're here, what the heck? I'll help you with the I'll help you with the beak. 
but I'm going to give you a secret. I'm not going to use yellow thread. I'm going to use green. And you might say, what the heck are you using green thread for? And you're going to see why. Because I'm going to work through the back my nose. And the key to this is I don't have to use thread. Now, again, you could use yellow thread, but I don't have to use thread. I have a hard time seeing or threading needles, so I do things the easiest way possible. And I'm going to work through the back of my beak, the back of the stitches of the beak, with my green, because I don't want the green to show through the front. But, I'm going to work through and then I'm going to be able to poke it through and I'm going to be able to work that beak and I'm going to be able to really fasten it off with the green because the green is going to hold it. There's just some little tricks to do in this and you'll get it after you've done done this for a while. Now what I'm going to try to do is work under the loops again. There, I think I got under the loops. And that nose should be pretty secure now. And then I got to try to hide it again, going back through a different way. And the, th the key is if you go back through the same loop, you're, you're just going to lose it because you have to, you're de-threading it if you go through the same loop. Alrighty, I think I've done okay. So, I have a little yarn there. I'm going to work this way, and then I'm going to work that way, back and forth, up up and down. Just remember, sideways and then up and down, and that secures your yarn. And that way, if you want to wash it, it's machine washable. I have to work that one in now too, but, I, but you get the message. And we've done this gorgeous pot holder. So if you want to see other projects and cards and all kinds of fun things that I make, please follow me on Lori's Handiwork on YouTube. Thank you.